You know that crunch when you bite into a fig fruit? Have you ever thought about those crunchy bits inside actually might be insects? Little wasps to be precise. If you've ever heard of a fig wasp, you might be suspicious. So let me explain to you what role fig wasps play in a life of a fig and whether you might be really finding them inside of the figs you eat. It's quite a fascinating story. But first, let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen a fig flower? You probably haven't, because they're hiding inside of a fig. This, what we would call a fig fruit, is in fact a syconium, an inflorescence consisting of many individual flowers. In a typical flower, the floral parts are attached to, or might be partially surrounded by, a thickening of the stem, or the flower stalk, which we call a receptacle. You can think of it as that swollen part between the flower stalk and the flower organs. You can see it in this example of a rose, or in a dandelion that has set seed, and you can see the receptacle becoming naked as the seeds are falling off. In our fig syconium, however, the receptacle is urn-shaped with the flowers attached to its inner surface, almost like the receptacle is turned inside out. So this fleshy part of the fig is a receptacle, and inside, in this hollow cavity, are flowers attached to it. So when we open up a fig, we see all these tiny fiber-like structures. These are all individual flowers. Figs have unisexual flowers and can be either monoecious or dioecious. When a female flower gets successfully pollinated, it turns into a fruit, namely a druplet, enclosing a tiny seed. In this ripe ficus carica, which is the species of fig we commonly eat, you can see that there are many tiny seeds inside. Each individual seed corresponds to one fruit, or what used to be one female flower. So the crunch you feel when biting into figs comes from crushing the seeds, not from biting into wasps. But that doesn't necessarily mean the wasps might not be there. We established that the fig flowers are hidden inside of the syconium. But for the flowers to be fertilized, they first need to get pollinated. So how do they get pollinated when no pollinators can get to them? There are about 800 species of ficus, and each species is associated with one, or sometimes multiple, specific species of agionid, or fig wasp, that perform the uneasy task of pollinating their flowers. And while the fig's reproduction is dependent on these wasps, the wasp's life cycle is in the same way dependent on these figs. The syconium has separate female and male flowers and is protogynous, which means that female flowers mature before the male flowers. When female flowers enter maturity and they are ready to receive pollen, they produce volatile attractants, chemical signals to the wasps, that they are ready to receive them and get pollinated. Here I captured tiny Blastophaga psenas, being attracted to the syconium of Ficus carica. So when the right species of a wasp is around, it's chemically drawn into a fig. But there is one problem. How does it get in? When you look at the bottom of a fig, you'll find a tiny hole. This opening is called an osteole. During flower development, the osteole is tightly shut by overlapping bracts. You can actually see these scale-like bracts on the outside, and they're even more visible when we open the fig up. Multiple layers of these rigid bracts are tightly shut, but when the female flowers become receptive, the bracts loosen up, making it possible for the female wasp to enter the fig by pushing through the scales. Squeezing in through the scales is a tough job though. Fig wasps have various modifications of their body parts that help them not only to get through this tight space, but also to protect their bodies along the way. Look at this Pleistodontes wasp. First of all, notice how tiny it is. But then look at its flat, elongated head with comb-like appendages that help the wasp to push through the osteol bracts. They're also able to hide their basal and tenal segments in a groove on their head. But even with these adaptations, the wasps come out on the other side beaten up, usually without wings, and with broken antennae and some might even die during the process. Once the female wasp is successfully in the syconium, her main task is to lay eggs. 
She lays her eggs in the ovaries of the female flowers, which provide a source of food for the developing larvae. The wasp crawls over the female flowers, and at each flower she inserts her ovipositor into a style, releasing an egg into the ovary. While doing so, she also releases the pollen that she carries on her body, often in a pocket on her thorax, depositing it on the stigmas. If you are now wondering where she got the pollen, hold that thought, we will get back to it in just a minute. Okay, so the wasp is depositing the eggs and pollinating the flowers at the same time, but what the wasp doesn't know is that there are two different types of flowers. Short-styled ones and long-styled ones. With the short-styled flowers, the wasp can easily reach the ovary with her ovipositor. However, with the long-styled ones, the ovipositor doesn't reach the ovary, so no eggs are deposited there. This is to ensure that some flowers will actually develop into a fruit and won't be eaten by the developing larvae inside. These short-styled flowers are also called gall flowers, since the tissue forms a hardened gall in which the egg develops into an adult wasp. So at this time, when the female wasp completed her task of pollinating and laying eggs, she dies. But at the same time, new life is growing in the flowers. After several weeks, the first adult wasps start emerging from the galls. These are the males. You can tell males from females very easily, as males are wingless and they have strong mandibles. I'm actually really excited, because after cutting up dozens of different figs, I finally captured one that had males inside. In this picture, you can see its telescopic abdomen that tapers into a penis. When males emerge from galls, they crawl around, impregnating the females that are still inside the galls. This means that once the females emerge from the galls, they're already impregnated. After the wingless males complete their main task, to impregnate females, they're destined to die, as they cannot survive for very long, especially in their wingless state. They use their strong jaws to chew holes through the fig, and shortly after they make it out, they die. Females, on the other hand, are at the very beginning of their mission. The mutualism between the figs and the wasps is so finely tuned that the fig pollen reaches maturity right at the time when the females start to emerge from the galls. The females crawl over the male flowers, getting the pollen on their bodies. Many species of fig wasps actually actively harvest pollen into their thoracic pollen pockets. After they harvest some pollen, the females utilize the holes the male wasps previously chewed to escape out of the fig. Now that they're out of the fig with a pocket full of pollen, they wait for a chemical signal from another fig which they enter, and the life cycle continues. And now on to the burning question. Can you actually find wasps in figs? Well, I did, as you can see in my photos. I found both male and female wasps inside some unripe figs of Ficus microcarpa. I also witnessed wasps getting into the cyconia of Ficus carica, which is the common fig we eat. However, by the time the fig is ripe, all the wasps have already left the cyconium, and the bodies of those that have died inside have been digested by a special enzyme called physin. On top of that, commercially grown figs that you would get in the store are often bred to self-pollinate, so no wasps are needed for the fruit to form. What do you think? Will you still eat figs after watching this video? If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to support my work, please consider joining us over on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.